StatCast, we want to take a look at the idea of skewness. Um, it's an idea you may have heard of before, and it ties in closely with the measures of center. Uh, those measures of center that we're going to talk about in particular here are the mean, the median, and the mode. Now, let's start out with a definition of, definition of skewness. We can say that a statistical graph is said to be skewed if the data frequencies tail off to one side. And so we can apply this notion to histograms, to frequency polygons, and you also see we can apply them to box plots as well. Now, there are four different uh, ways we can classify the skewness of a graph. Uh, we can say graph is skewed left or skewed right or is symmetric or is not skewed at all. Uh, the first two give us an idea of the direction of the skewness. The last two are not skewed, uh, but it's a way to describe the shape of the graph. And the most important thing here is that the skewness of a graph is defined by the direction of its tail. In other words, the direction that it tails off. And let's take a look at that graphically here. Uh, we can see here that this graph is skewed to the left because it tails off to the left. It tails off to the left side. So we say a graph like this is skewed left. And when that happens, the greater frequencies, the greater class frequencies, occur in the latter classes, the classes at the bottom of our frequency distribution. And if a graph is skewed to the left, we always know that the value of the median will be less than that of the mode. Uh, sometimes we can't say much about the mean, but the median will always be to the left of the mode. In other words, less than the mode We want when we want to uh, compare those measures of center. Now contrast that with a graph that's skewed to the right. Here the graph tails off to the right side. In other words, the greater frequencies are in the beginning classes, the top classes of our frequency distribution. So the graph tails off to the right, it's skewed right, and the values of the median will be greater than the mode. Now think about it, the mode is always the very top, it's the most frequently occurring item, so that's always at the peak of a, of a graph that we have. The median, well we'll talk about that in a minute and see how it works. Uh, but a couple other ways we can we can describe the, a, uh, a graph, whether it be a histogram, a frequency polygon, or like I said, even a box plot. One would be symmetric. In this case, the graph is symmetric, and notice here it's a mirror image of itself at the mode, the peak of it. All right. Sometimes it's called normal shape. Sometimes it's called a bell curve. Uh, the graph tails off to both sides, both to the left and to the right. And when this, when this occurs, when we have a symmetric graph, the highest frequencies occur in the middle classes. In other words, they start out, the frequencies start out slow in the initial classes. They're fairly small numbers. The greatest frequencies are in the middle classes. As we look at the latter classes, the frequencies get smaller. And when we have a graph that's symmetric like this, the mean, median, and mode are all about the same number. The uh, mode is always the peak. The median divides the graph into two equal areas. And the mean, we can think of that as a probability weighted average. And then finally, like I talked about before, no skewness. And this happens quite frequently when we have no um, pattern as to the frequencies from one class to another. And just to review what we just talked about, the mode is always the highest point on the statistical graph. The median divides the area under a uh, histogram, frequency polygon, or a box plot into equal areas. And the mean, we can say, is a probability, excuse me, the mean is a weighted average, uh, weighted for the class values. Let's take a look at an example here. Uh, the results for a survey question, how many credit hours are you now taking, is shown as the, in this histogram. Now, let's see if we can classify its skewness here. If we take a look, the first, the initial classes having from, uh, what, uh, five to eight um, uh, 
class hours, credit hours enrolled, there's only two. For the next class, it's six, and then seven, and then nine. So we can see here that this graph is skewed left. In other words, the graph tails off to the left side. The initial classes have the smaller frequencies, the latter classes have the greater frequencies. So this graph is skewed left. Now, well, like I said before, th there is also an association between box plots and skewness. Here's that same data put into a box plot. So we see the minimum uh, uh, credit hours enrolled is 6, and then the first quartile is 12, the median is 16 hours, and then the uh, third quartile is 17 hours, and then finally 18 is the maximum value. So notice here that the left whisker is a lot longer than the right whisker. So that's another way we can determine that the graph has skewness. If one whisker is a lot longer than the other, when we take a look at this box plot, it's always going to be skewed more toward the longer whisker. And uh, so, like, like I said before, let's kind of uh, summarize that. The less left whisker is significantly longer, the data is skewed left. Same thing with right skewness. If we have a longer right whisker, it's significantly longer, the data is skewed right. The data may be symmetric if the whiskers are approximately equal, but some of that depends upon the relationship between the median and then the two other quartiles, the first and third quartiles. Now we can also quantify skewness and give it a number. There's several ways to do that. First is called Pearson's skewness coefficients. And one way we can do is to compare the mean and the mode, and then compare the mean and the median. And then there's the Bowie skewness, and it compares the quartiles. It uses those measures of position. So let's take a look at these co uh, skewness coefficients here. Uh, the first one compares the mean and the mode. So notice what we do is to take the mean minus the mode, and then take that difference and divide it by the standard deviation. So that's used sometimes when we have limited information about a graph. The most common type of, of uh, uh, measurement of skewness is the Pearson skewness coefficient for the mean and the median. So notice here, what we do is we take the mean minus the median, and then triple that difference, and then take that result and divide it by the standard deviation. It's, it's, it's multiplied by 3 just to kind of lengthen out the numbers so we can kind of see the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the information we had before and compute the skewness coefficient for it. So here are the descriptive statistics for the number of credits students were enrolled. And uh, let's go ahead and compute the Pearson's skewness coefficient for the mean and the, me and the median for those. So here we go. Notice first, if we simply take the mean minus the mode, take that difference divided by the standard deviation, we get negative 0.73. Also notice, if we use that more common measure of the Pearson skewness coefficient, we take the mean, 14.6, minus the median, 16, triple that and then divide by 3.33, we get negative 1.28. And then, if we use that valley skewness, notice what we did there is we took the uh, uh, third quartile minus twice the median plus the third quartile and then divided it by the interquartile range, 17 minus 12 in this case. Now, the thing that's important for all of these numbers is not the, the pure numerical value, but the sign of the numbers that you notice. Notice all of these uh, skewness coefficients are negative. When a skewness uh, coefficient is negative, in particular, the second one, the Pearson skewness coefficient for the mean and the median. When these numbers are negative, the data is skewed left. When it's positive, it's skewed right. The larger the number is for the second